Hey guys, welcome to the video going viral lately again on Twitter, on X. And it's all about my newest episode that I had with Sadia Khan, relationship expert and psychologist on my relationship talking channel, which is called Theory Talks. We have live streams every single night. You can check it out. So right at the end of the video, about an hour in, I ask her a Star Wars question, the only Star Wars question. Everything else is all about relationships and dating and whatever. And I posted this clip on my Twitter, which I'll show you guys. So if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and do that. I have a new Twitter now. My old one had about 160K followers, deleted it last summer, two summers ago. And now I started a new one. So, so you can follow me there. So where is it? And there's a whole bunch of people sharing this around and not providing any context or any sort, well, not even context, but any link backs or anything, but that's typical. So. I asked her a question regarding the new, well, you can watch actually. So, <laughs> okay, go ahead. It, I've never it, seen Star Wars in my life. But, no, it yeah. relates to what we're so, so once yeah. Disney took over Star Wars, they, uh, they started to change the whole infrastructure around and really, you know, kind uh -huh. of dog the men and focus on the women a lot in the sense where there mm. wasn't much training and this and that. There's a new director for one of the Star Wars movies and she says it's about time that a woman come in and shape the Star Wars mm -hmm. movies and galaxy. And it's causing a huge uproar on the internet. So many mm. people are saying this is ridiculous. We've had women in Star Wars Galaxy before. And other people are saying, well, you know, people's egos that are having a problem with this are very fragile and their masculinity is fragile. Yeah. What's your overall consensus when a, a female director wants to come in and reshape something and say, you know, it's you know, plant that flag that, hey, I'm a woman and, you know, hear me roar. Here is my way of making this sort of franchise, which is already established now something mm. that's feminine dominant or, or female dominant whatever it might be instead yeah. of just a good story yeah i think what happens in particularly in western cultures where women have it so easy but they pretend they're not what happens with women who generally have it quite easy they enjoy victimhood because that's the only way that they can feel part of other people's struggle what makes human beings feel alive is when they're a bit struggling when they're going through something where they've gone through a bit of trauma they've gone through something it makes them feel alive what's happened with women in the western world particularly is because there is no real oppression but they want to be a victim so bad because victimhood is just a way of kind of shortcutting sympathy everyone just it's a, it's a shortcut entitlement you get what you want without having to earn it because you just happen to be a victim so what happens is they want to start finding places where they can be a victim and then transform it so that they can become a hero so what they'll do is say oh we need more women in this particular sport nobody watches them nobody wants women in there but they'll just say stamp their authority so they can be a local hero then we need more women in star wars no we don't no one can, women don't even want watch Star Wars but they don't even care about it it's a man's little thing let them have it but they want to be like oh there's such a deprivation we've got to be in it so they can be a mini hero when you don't have anything outside of your gender as a way of being proud of yourself you use your gender as a shortcut for entitlement and heroic stances so um, I would just say unfortunately it is the norm in um, western cultures to kind of be, I over identify with your gender and then over identify with victimhood it's a way of getting a short cut to being a hero and as a result it's just there to design and also what it does is keeps the power in the hands of the women and whenever you replay redirect power entirely to women just like if it was entirely to men it creates an unhealthy uh, society if the power is totally in men's hands it would be unhealthy if it's totally in women's hands it's also unhealthy but what we're doing is i i remember like um in an environment i did a talk and I, it was a mainly gen z a very young generation i couldn't believe how feminine the men were i everybody Everybody looked androgynous. I couldn't believe, and and I just for uh, you would just take the normal eighteen year old boy um, would have been considered as a really feminine man years and years ago. They would have seen him as like super super uh, feminine, or they would have just assumed he's homosexual. In this day and age, that's just how the men are come. So they've lost uh, the man's masculinity. Yeah, and so what's happening is uh, the culture is creating the very men women will not desire in the future. By doing this, you're going to create a bunch of men that you will no longer be sexually attracted to. And as a result, you'll be more miserable in the long run. Well, so there's her remarks on. And by the way, when she says women aren't watching Star Wars, she's never seen Star Wars herself. And typically from Bob Iger's documentary, in his biography, uh, not documentary, in his biography, in his book, he actually stated himself that when he was looking to purchase Star Wars from George Lucas, it was primarily, I think it was 96% or 94% uh, 
male dominant. So what Disney has done, they've completely shifted it so that more women are involved. Of course, this feels different. And I am all about having more women involved in Star Wars, but not at the expense of the male characters being sidelined and looking like crap. I think we could equally have male and female characters being just as awesome. We don't have to have one over the other or anything like that. In the original trilogy, Leia was doing her thing. She was badass. She was handling the front on the political side, and Luke was handling the front on the physical force action side. That's how they came together. And the two worked as a team. You couldn't have one without the other. You can't have a successful rebellion without Leia. Leia was the rebellion. You couldn't have a successful rebellion without Luke Skywalker. And so I truly feel that a lot of people getting angry about this really are the same typical people that will take one thing or one sentence and instead of listening to the rest of it or reading the rest of it, they'll go, <gasps> I'm triggered. And so now I'm going to run with my thoughts. And that's what the Western part of the world does is that they run with their thoughts. They get triggered by something, they run with it, they believe it, and that becomes the, at the forefront of their mind forever. And they are unable, incapable of listening to the actual facts presented to them, anything that's written in front of them or said to them about what the actual case is and they just run with whatever they hear women don't watch star wars oh my god sexism oh my god this is so not right women aren't involved in star wars no look if you do as much due diligence as i have done when it comes to reading star wars understanding Star Wars, and outside of star wars the people who have bought star purchased star wars bob Iger and his biography he literally says that women didn't really watch star wars it was a male dominant movie Man, I remember it wasn't really cool to say that you liked Star Wars. You know, it wasn't the comic book shop stuff. But if you told a chick at a party or something like that in high school or elementary school on the playground that you watched Star Wars and you get made fun of like crazy, cool kids didn't watch Star Wars at the time. Oh, no, you're okay, Abby. <laughs> and now it's being used as some sort of a clique, some sort of movement, some sort of a nerd culture. Like, I'm a nerd. I'm a, it's like, guys don't get that. That wasn't a thing back in the day. And now it's it's a thing only because it's part of a, a clique or it's in. It's like the fad. It, it's a part of your identity now. It, no, man. We were ostracized for like in Star Wars back in the day. And now it's at a point where, okay, like everyone's feeling inclusive and, and shit about it. But it's not, I don't feel like it's genuine, to be honest with you. I feel like maybe you know, a portion of it's genuine. And again, people are going to say, oh my God, he said it's not genuine. I'm not a Star Wars fan. It's like, well, if that applies to you, no problem. Go ahead. That applies to you. But in my opinion, I think everything she said was correct. You know, you don't need to have constantly everything being about gender. And that's what we have in Star Wars today. And that's really the main problem with it. It's that we're constantly being pushed this gender crap. You know, I'm a woman. I'm now going to shape Star Wars. Ah, oh, man, there were so many women before that. There was Marsha Lucas. I mean, who literally shaped A New Hope when she edited it. Bryce Dallas Howard. Deborah Chow. Kenobi Show. Patty Jenkins, when she made her... Well, I wish she did. When she was going to make the Rogue Squadron movie. Her trailer was awesome. It was all about her and her connection to Air Force pilots and her father who was an Air Force pilot and her love for Star Wars and how it meant a lot to her and to her when she was a kid and her connection with her dad and how she wants to make an awesome fighter pilot movie. That's great. I think everybody was down for it. You know, and then they fired Gina Carano and everything just got rough. And then her movie got let go, which I was like, why? I would have looking forward to it immensely. But then you get Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy, who is a complete activist. And yes, look, she has said, I want to make men uncomfortable. I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. Now that was in response to a political movie that she made, which was just for the atrocities that men in the Middle East, I think it was Pakistan or something like that, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't seen it. They were pouring acid or something on women or some, something of this nature. They were doing very atrocious things to women. And of course, let's make those men feel, let's not even make them uncomfortable. Let's put them in jail, you know, or whatever. I'll, I don't know what I can say on YouTube. But when she doubles down on things so much, you know, there was another piece where I, I'm trying to find it, but I remember seeing it where she was like, I personally enjoy, let me try to find it right here, actually. I know I can, I know I can find this, man. Maybe it's this one. I am a storyteller and an activist. And um, my body of work over the last 20 years has been uh, guided by my activism and every single piece of work that I've ever created has a piece of activism in it. It could be very overt or it could be covert, but it is there. Uh, make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I truly think that the main issue with 
Star Wars today is that there's a way too much of a um, focus on this whole gender. You know, I'm as much for equality as the next. For, in fact, I'm more about equality than many people who are constantly preaching it on Twitter and do nothing about it to look like they're uh, part of some sort of a cause. But I, I truly believe that if we want to move forward as a community, as a people, as Star Wars fans, we need to let go of this gender pushing stuff. You know, it, it doesn't matter if someone is male or female. It's irrelevant. When it comes to storytelling, we just have to worry about telling the stories. I don't care if you got a female writer, a male writer, an alien writer. It doesn't matter to me. I think the best thing to do moving forwards is to stop focusing so much on this and to just tell good stories. At the end of the day, that's really all we want. And doing anything other than that really kind of just empowers the idea that women aren't in power. If we have to constantly be pushing it, it's just kind of making us double down and focus on the fact that, yeah, you know, maybe there's an issue. that you know, The whole word empowerment, it's stemming from something that's not in power. But in today's world and society, and one day I want to have a daughter, and I want her to feel normal. I don't want her to feel like she is over men. I don't want her to feel like she's under men. I want her to feel normal. You know, and I think that this constant pushing that we're doing in the West of this unbelievable obsession that we have with gender is really going to damage us and divide us as a whole and as a society. So I think going forwards, what we really need to do is just focus more on who we are as people, how we treat each other, and less on our gender. I think that's probably the most important thing going forward is just not worry about that, not think about that kind of stuff, but rather just focus on who we are as people. And if we're telling stories, focus on the stories being good. Let the character development, let the story shape the story, not a woman shaping the story or a man shaping the story or whatever. So that's what I think about that. At the end of the day, I truly believe that we are all just one people and we're one alien invasion away from coming together. But until then, hopefully we get some good Star Wars and, and we can stop fighting about things. And hopefully, you know, these, these triggered loonies, can, and I call them loonies because at this point, they're just so tiresome. They take some word and they just run with it. And it's, it's you know, it's this whole idea. It's, it's everything I have studied so hard with psychology and learned from some of the world's best psychologists, for example, like Sadia Khan, like Dr. Stephen Phillipson in Manhattan, that if you really want to understand your mind, you have to realize that thoughts are irrelevant. And so when people get triggered so easily, and as a person who has severe OCD, and has learned to master it, you have to realize that when you get a thought, or something, you're reading something, you get triggered by something, that trigger doesn't necessarily mean it's real. That doesn't make it what you actually think. The trigger is irrelevant. It's something that your body creates without your option, without your ability, without your control. And if you had control over it, well, then none of us would get triggered because who wants to be triggered? So it's like anxiety. Nobody wants anxiety. If you had control of it, you'd be able to get rid of it. You just have to let it do its thing. You just let, allow it to be there. And the same goes with this. If you're reading something or you hear her say, oh, women don't like Star Wars anyways. Well, it's true. Many of them didn't like Star Wars. And still to this day, compared to men, it's still more so in the percentage of men that like Star Wars. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but it is true, and especially in other parts of the world where Star Wars, I mean, she's a psychologist. Star Wars really isn't that prevalent in her mind or in her life or with the people she surrounds herself with. But for us in this circle, oh my God, yes, it's the most important thing because some of us actually really love it. Some of us are just using it to make money. And we all know who those people are. And people like to throw me in that category. And that's fine. You can throw me in that category. But I think there really is nobody on this platform in the world who has invested the amount of time and money that I have into creating free things for the community just out of my love for Star Wars. So anyways, don't get triggered so easily. Try to understand something, you know, when people say, hey, uh, listen to something all the way or watch something all the way and then judge. Yeah, you should do that here too. And if you get triggered by it, then you're probably who she's talking about. And that's not really a good thing. So that's what I think about all of this and a bit of a psychology talk. If you want to learn more or have more fun and talk more about psychology and stuff, join Theory Talks. Just check it out. We do live streams every night. Beyond that, I have a new strength theory video for you guys waiting, which is my gym channel. You guys want to go ahead and enjoy that. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys got some um, insight out of it. And let me know what you think. I always enjoy reading your guys' comments because I do. I do go through them. And some of it's insightful. Some of it's not. So we'll see what's up. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. May the force be with you. Always.